if Xi uh, follows the, the route of devaluation, he is going to uh, come up against a, a severe, you know, pushback from the US and its allies, and probably another round in the trade wars. Welcome to another Breakout with Breaking Views, brought to you by PGIM. I'm Rob Cox, coming to you from Zurich, Switzerland. I'm speaking with Edward Chancellor in the UK. Eddie, you've written a piece that says the Chinese economic miracle may be over. Uh, what's that mean? Talk to me about this. Well, think of it. Um, China has been developing since its reform period, uh, growing very rapidly for the last 40 years. But if you look at China and see what it's doing, you realize that China is really following uh, what's called the Asian development model uh, of economic development, which has been previously tried by Japan, South Korea, and, all, and, and really most of the countries I, I, in that region. And if you look at those, uh, at how the, those development, um, how the, those countries develop, you, you see that each time, the 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 the, boot, the sort of development miracle came to an abrupt end, and I think China has reached that point. What gives you that? What? Why do you think we've reached that now? I mean, you you have been writing for years, Eddie, that um, China was on the verge of of the end of its economic miracle, and certainly you've been right in some respect with with asset prices and things like that. But but why would why is this time different? Okay, so um, let me describe briefly the Asian uh, development model. First of all, it, it, it involves the, the government controlling the, the, the banking system. Then the banks lend money at, at very low rates of interest to favoured industries, which use the money to invest and grow very rapidly. At the same time, they, dry, they suppress their currencies. And, and while suppressing their currencies and paying low interest, they actually suppress consumption and dry and boost savings and then they drive very fast export driven growth and the other another aspect of, of, of this model is, is that you borrow technology uh, established te uh, technology from from the west and china has followed that model but then korea followed that model beforehand and and japan did likewise now if you think about it both japan in 1990 hit the buffers and korea and the rest of the tiger economies uh, folded about seven or about six or seven years later, and one one wants to look and think what happened to those countries. And here I point out in the piece the the the, the, the dangers or the instabilities caused by the Asian by the Asian development model. First of all, I say that low interest rates uh, feed housing bubbles or real estate bubbles. Now Japan had one of the great real estate bubbles of all time uh, that peaked in, 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 in 1989. But, and, and I, as I mentioned the piece, it was said that, you know, the, 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 la the, the land of the Imperial Palace in Tokyo in 89 was worth more than, uh, than, ca than Canada's entire real estate. Now look at China. It not only has the valuation of the land is as high relative to GDP as Japan's was then, but China has enough excess uh, of vacant properties to hire Canada's, uh, to house Canada's entire population. Then look at some other things. Uh, the China's debt levels, debt has grown much faster in China over the last 12 years than it did in Japan and the other Asian uh, e uh, economies during their boom periods. Um, China, so, so if, you, if you look at it in that way, it has more debt, it has a bigger real estate bubble, and, and frankly, when, when, you have, when you're in that situation, uh, you're, you're, you're in trouble. And, and of course, Xi Jinping, the president of the People's Republic, to your point uh, in your article, is well aware of these problems, is, 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 is executing policy directed towards it, whereas investors may not be quite on the same page. Yeah, I, I think so. Xi, has, uh, for a number of years now, he's been, he's been going on about the problems that, that property should be for living in rather than speculation, that's too much leverage in, in, uh, in China's economy. And he's all, you know, he, he points out that, that, that growth at any cost has not delivered uh, uh, what he would, what he now calls common prosperity for the Chinese people. See, he and and as we've discussed earlier, 
he's he's now trying to burst the housing bubble. But the housing bubble has been the mainstay of China's growth over the last 10 years. We can't blame Xi for this because all these things are largely done under, under, under Xi's predecessors. So Xi was, in fact, although he's been in power for, for, for six, six or seven years, he was actually handed a, a poison chalice, and, and I think he knows it. So what is the upshot of this? If you look back at what happened with South Korea, Japan, Thailand, some of the other Asian tigers that went through this development model, um, how do they get out of it? And what does it mean from a financial perspective? So I, I, I think the, out, the outcome is, is potentially binary. You can go down the Japan route, and as you know, the Japan route uh, was uh, you know, a, decade, a, a lost decade of economic growth, uh, debt, lingering debt deflation, uh, and two uh, banking crises. So I don't, think, uh, I don't think the Chinese want to go down, you know, to follow, to imitate Japan. The alternative as, it, as what happened in the Asian crisis was a much short, shorter, sharper shock that was associated with currency devaluation. And the advantage of that is say you know, Korea devalued in, 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 in between 97 and 98 is that the, um, is that the, the economies become much more competitive and Korea then bounced back uh, in, in 99, growing by more than 10 percent. Yes, so, so it did this in part by being an exporter. I mean, the, the one deal exactly. So you basically Korean exports were, were cheaper. Is that going to happen? I mean, China, you know, there's a real question around uh, Chinese ability to export its manufactured goods around the world as a result of everything we've seen over the past few years. No. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually Chinese exports have been growing pretty fast in the sort of coronavirus era. Uh, but the, I think the problem is that that whereas Korea uh, was an ally of, of the U.S. and a relatively small uh, country and and exporter, China is the world's largest number one exporter. And I think the Americans and the Europeans are now much more aware that by allowing China to grow its exports over the last 25 years, millions of manufacturing jobs were lost in the West. So I, I think that if Xi uh, follows the the route of devaluation, which is probably most likely, he is going to uh, come up against a uh, uh, severe, you know, pushback from the U.S. and its allies, and probably another round in the uh, in the in the trade wars. Okay, well, thank you, Eddie. That's that's interesting. The article will be out this week, and we'll be back with another breakout from Breaking Views soon.